In this video, we're going to show very basic concepts to family creation for Revit Architecture and Revit MVP 2011. Uh, when you come into a typical family template, uh, you've got two reference planes, and the intersection of those planes is the insertion point of the family. Um, I'm going to build a box and then put parameters on it and uh, basically uh, demonstrate how we can take those parameters, control the width, height, and uh, length of certain elements. So the first thing we have to do is use what's called you know, the reference planes to uh, set up some uh, control over the geometry. So what I'm going to do is just throw out four planes that will basically control the length and the width of the objects. And what I'll do is I'll put in a dimension from the outside to the center to the outside and apply an equistat constraint to the reference planes. So next what I'll do is I'll actually go in here and add a dimension here. And now we're going to add our first parameter. So we select the dimension, go up here to label and say add parameter. We'll call this one uh, let's call this one length. And the group parameter under, we're going to let that be the dimension uh, group parameter. If we wanted uh, to be able to control this um, for, say, every individual instance in the family, once it's in, uh, brought into a project, then we would make this an instance parameter. By setting it as a type parameter, they have to go and edit the type to be able to manipulate the dimensions of this family once it's inserted into a project. For this example, we'll leave this as being a type parameter. So now we see that we've got length equals three foot. If we take and adjust these objects, or the reference planes here, you'll notice that the, the length is updating accordingly. If I select one of these parameters, or one of the reference planes, I can again just drag that around go back into the parameters and change that dimension to be three foot. Once I hit apply, then it'll bring it back. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other direction. I put in an equistat dimension and then an overall dimension and add a parameter to that one. Let's call this one width. And the same applies to this, and that we can control uh, that parameter by dragging things around. So up to this point, all I've done is I've put in reference planes. I haven't actually put in a geometry yet. Now I'm actually going to go and put an extrusion in here. So uh, we'll go to the Home tab. Go to the Home tab, hit Extrusion, and we can do a rectangle this point I'm not going to actually draw it over top of the reference planes until I complete the extrusion. So um, I haven't put it in the depth yet. I'm going to leave that alone for the moment. I'm going to hit finish. Now what I've got is, a, is basically the box. What I'll next do is use an alignment and unlock them to the uh, reference planes. So I'll use the align command, hit my reference plane, and then the extrusion, and then lock it down. And I'll do it on, on all four edges. So what we did by doing that is we uh, basically put control over the extrusion uh, through the use of the parameters. So now if I adjust the uh, location of those reference planes, then the extrusion will go along with it. So if we show that in a three-dimensional view, I go to my parameters again, and I change, say, the width to, say, let's say two foot, and the length to three foot. Once I hit apply, we'll see that in the background that the extrusion is adjusting, and that's because it's locked to those reference planes. So the next thing we need to do is be able to control the height. To do that, we'll go to um, the left view. It's a good idea to always be consistent um, where with uh, 
where your dimensions are shown. Um, so for instance, uh, anything that's being done in plan, I'm always going to do in my reference level. Anything that's going to be done in elevation, I can either do it in my front or my left, um, but I just want to be as consistent as possible. That way you can you can know to go to one location for each type of, uh, each one of those uh, those dimensions and uh, parameters. So I'm going to put in another reference plane. And on this one, I'm just going to go from the reference plane up to the new reference level plane. So I'm going from reference level up to the reference plane that I put in. And then on this one, I'm going to go, say, add parameter. And this one's going to be called height. Again, leaving it under dimensions. And finally, locking my extrusion to that reference plane. So then again, as before, I can stretch that around and control it, and it's going to adjust my uh, extrusion as well. And then if we go into that 3D view again, we go into our parameters, and if we adjust our height, say to a foot, we'll see that our extrusion is following along with it. It is uh, a best practice to uh, do what's called flexing the family in each one of the parameters as you add the parameters. So if you notice, what I did was I went in and I adjusted um, each one of these each one of these parameters by you know uh, moving around the reference planes and testing, making sure that that those parameters work before moving on to the next one. This helps us. Uh, avoid issues uh, throughout the creation of the family. So if we did all the parameters and then went and tried to flex it later and found out that there was uh, some kind of error in it, we, it would be difficult to ascertain where that error is. So by creating the parameters and then adjusting the parameters, we ensure that, that the parameters are working properly. So that's the basics of uh, family editing. In future videos, we'll continue to build on these concepts and and make more complex families with more parameters and more geometry.